Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Wellness Wednesday Inspiration. We are live today with Dr. Linda Marquez, and we have a guest today who is the estrogen doctor, Dr. Larissa. We are super excited because this podcast is going to be packed with tons and tons of useful information for females, no matter what age we are on in our lives. The podcast name for today is How to Optimize Female Health with Precision Medicine. Dr. Linda, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm great. Happy Wednesday, our favorite day of the week, Wellness Wednesday Inspiration, to bring info to all the amazing, our, our audience here, but also, I know even men and people from, you know, internationally listen to this, and it's a lot of great information, but I'm I'm really excited about our podcast, and just wanted to, I know you've been busy. You're in the middle of how's your book coming along, the chapter that you're working on. I know you've been busy with that. I just submitted it. I'm waiting for uh, the critique so I can awesome. make some edits. And yes, the book is, I believe, due to come out for sale at the end of January. So pretty okay. excited about that. That's awesome. That's so exciting. So I know mm -hmm. just being involved in a book project, there's, there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of work. A lot of people don't realize, you know, when you write a book, there's so much that goes into that. Um, yes. One of the things that's interesting right now that I'm kind of, I always go back and look at some of the things I've done in the past. So I'm actually now starting to do, I used to do this every, almost every week on Mondays. I would do a water fast. I don't know if you've ever done like a 24 hour fast of just mm -hmm. nothing but water. Have you ever done that? Yes, I have. I have. Okay. And you feel great. When was the last time you did something like that? I bet you Dr. Larissa probably is, in, is going to share some stuff on fasting and women. But when was the last time you did something like that? The last time that I did a, a water fast was probably about six months ago. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And there's so many benefits to that as well because you, you don't have to think about what you're going to eat. You can really focus. And I think right now, in the process of writing programs and books, it's the perfect time to do a 24 hour water fast and really get some of that autophagy to start kicking in. And you start looking younger, you're less cramp, you know, crankier, and your digestion improves as well. So, with that being said, um, we're gonna have an amazing show today. I just know we are. Dr. Larissa is an OBGYN. She's got a private practice in Florida. She is known as the estrogen doctor. And reason being is because women, no matter what period we are in our life, estrogen is really important. The hormone is very important. And her focus is on precision medicine. And basically what that is, and I'm gonna let her explain, but it's really a customized approach for women when um, trying to become the best version of them, all mind, body and spirit. And her approach is lined up with what we do, which is a holistic approach with a W, which means, you know, looking at the mind, the body, and the spirit. And that's what I love about her and how she's working with women. And really, her programs are creating super women. So as an OBGYN, she knows the female body so well. And we as women, we feel more comfortable talking to another female doctor who really gets us and understands us. And that's the beauty of why we want her on our show. We want her to share with you and also sharing some of her um, own self-care strategies and, you know, what led up to that transition from traditional medicine into what she's doing with precision medicine. So we're so happy to have her. So let's bring her on. Bring her on. Dr. Hi. So excited to have you on. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, how about you two? Amazing. <laughs> We've been looking forward to having you on the podcast for over a month. So the, the day is finally here. It's nothing like a lot of girl talk, right? Some real juicy girl talk. That's what I like. It gives me excited. <laughs> Dr. Larissa, can you tell us a little bit about you in your own words? Oh, absolutely. So I am Dr. Larissa Ferdinand, and I am a women's hormone expert, a board certified OBGYN. And 
I help women improve their hormone balances um, because I believe when you get 40 and beyond or even 35 and beyond, we still want to show up. We still want to produce. We still want to perform. And what better way to do that to lead more powerful lives? Um, I do that through more of an integrative space of helping women connect mind, body, spirit, and hormones. So that's why we're very much aligned in that respect. I love that. Mind, body, spirit, and hormones. And I do that. <laughs> because so many people, when they think of hormones, all they think is like female hormones, but actually hormones, that's how our body communicates. I mean, we, we have the thyroid and we look at our gut, you look at liver, it's all interconnected. And I love how that's something that you implement in, in your practice and working with women. So estrogen is like the main player, right? And you're in, in one of your website, I know um, you're the estrogen doctor. Can you kind of just give a little, um, you know, a little bit of summary of why that's so important and how that changes even as we go through um, our time in our life from 30s, 40s. And one, one thing that I'm really curious and how you deal with this too is our teens nowadays, so many of them, I, I don't know, and I would love for you to address this. I know I'm putting a lot out there, but okay. when we were growing up, how I was never on any type of birth control pill, but that now is becoming so common with the teenagers now and then the ramifications of what that causes in later on. I would love for you to chat about that. <laughs> It's interesting because I feel like I get more moms coming to me about trying to have that conversation um, because it is it's just important. Uh, the CDC quotes what an average age of girls interest or at least uh, trying sex is about 13. So, I mean, you oh. you it, you have to have those conversations and, and understand your body at so much more of an earlier age. So um, I'm going to try to do the first part of your question, Dr. Linda, which has to do with just the transition in a woman's life um, mm -hmm. right on the nail of understanding like the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. I mean, these are crucial transition times in our biological clock. And estrogen has several hundred functions in our body, but you are so right. I mean, there's so many other hormones. I mean, we produce hormones pretty much everywhere. And what I love about women's health and making sure women understand the connection is, guess what? Who else are the communicators, the regulators? the leaders, the operating systems, women are, right? And yeah. so that's exactly what hormones do just as well. And each decade of our life presents uh, a welcome challenge, but a challenge that may be more difficult to others than, um, than not. And with that is understanding not only that mind, body, spirit, and how all those things kind of collectively come together, but I work a lot with women, you know, 35 and up because not only we're going through like these developmental changes, um, but I mean, some of us are starting families late, just getting married mm -hmm. at the peak of our careers. I mean, you have all this other environmental type factors. And mm -hmm. this will impact even the hormones on top of your biological changes. So let's step back a minute and then look at the second part of your question, which is, okay, now we're dealing with teenagers and younger women. And, mm -hmm. and um, I love the question, well, does it mean they have a hormonal imbalance? I'm like, look at these girls, they're developing at like, earlier ages. I mean, yes. puberty is more common there. Um, and it has a lot to do with our environment. We have a lot yeah. more toxins in our environment compared to our elders, our ancestors, when we first um, started cultivating our land. Um, things in our food that are uh, endocrine disruptors and mimic mm -hmm. estrogen, you know, you're going to get a lot of more breast development and hip development and especially in certain culture, cultural and ethnic backgrounds. So mm -hmm. all of that kind of plays a factor in different age groups and especially, you know, now that we're seeing in our younger women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. 
Dr. Larissa, I'm very interested about learning a little bit more about personalized medicine mm -hmm. and just learning about your transition because any of these, it's not taught in school, right? We go mm -hmm. to traditional school and we are learning how to treat the patient from a system base, right? So what's going on? The nervous system, it's breaking down or is it the cardiovascular system or is it the endocrine system? But then how do you, how did you transition? What made you transition and what is personalized precision medicine? Okay. So a personalized or precision medicine, and uh, you'll find that there might be different definitions out there and it's not to really complicate things, but it's a way to systemically, uh, systematically look at the complex mm -hmm. system where we're going to individualize it a lot better for the person, meaning we are going to put more personalized tools. Like, for instance, I use epigenetics now when working with women and understanding what that is. It's the understanding of how your genetic or your DNA footprint, blueprint, however you want to call it, but above the gene where you have environmental factors can play into which genes are turned on or turned off or which genes are expressed. And so you kind of marry those things under that personalized umbrella, you get more of a customized approach, you know, like what what woman out there doesn't like a, a customize something? You know what I'm saying? We customize our Starbucks, we customize <laughs> our homes. You know, we do all these things. So why not do it in our health? And to answer the second component, the transition and what led to that were my patients. I mean, honestly, I would be, you know, lying if I didn't say, you know, what helped spur a lot of the transition was someone standing in front of me or sitting in front of me and having all the constellations of what looks like menopause. And I'm looking at my traditional training and I'm testing things. And actually, most of my traditional training was not really testing, you know, or mm -hmm. hormone type things. Um, and everything looks normal. And then someone just been like, okay. Uh, but I don't feel normal, you yeah. know, this isn't, this isn't right. And going into kind of searching a little bit beyond what traditional medical curriculum did, which is really understanding more of those integrative approaches, understanding that um, having to connect with men, women at a deeper level mm -hmm. and how all of those things impact and it was it was mainly a transition out of okay how can i better serve <laughs> you know mm -hmm. how can we make the significant changes when we know in our in our systems and our statistics what i call the power statistics women are still leading in autoimmune disease thyroid yeah. problems hormone depression you know like mm -hmm. we have to start somewhere and start changing the paradigm and the mindset shifts mm -hmm. That's awesome. And I totally see that in my practice as well, working primarily with women. A lot of them come in and they've been tested at the yin yang and they've told me my doctor's on all my tests. He says my, my labs are normal. And I'm like, okay, let's let's do a little bit more testing. I find out, oh, you've got Hashimoto's, your thyroid antibodies are up the roof. T3 was never checked, you know, your iron levels are never checked, but D was never checked, you know. And so I think that's where what you're doing and with personalized medicine is it can't be cookie cutter. That paradigm is just not working anymore. That model of medicine is not working anymore. And I love that you're looking more at systems based instead of symptom based where it's like a pill for every ill. Mm -hmm. And it's so difficult for people to get out of that mindset. But I think practitioners like yourself and what we do is we wanna educate people that know we need a new model of health care um, and more wellness care. Um, prevention is always the best cure for disease, <laughs> as I like to say, um, and really, you know, educating people in that. Now, how do you, because I know when you were talking about, you know, um, the genetics and epigenetics, your genes do not determine your destiny. A lot of it is how that is manipulated, sort of speak. Are there, is there um, a lot of testing that now comes into practice with your office, working with your patients? Is that something that you do with all your female patients? Or, um, is the, um, the genetic testing and which one do you like? Um, currently, because I, I will say I did 
my best of trying to marry within the hybrid of traditional medicine. And it's difficult. And I, I know I'm speaking to a lot of practitioners out there that might be listening into it or, you know, patients or clients who have experienced the same thing. Because within that traditional model, of course, there's an insurance-based model and many of the testing and things that really allow that personalized touch and individualization that is necessary is not covered with insurance. And so that, you know, I want to make sure that's communicated here that it's difficult and challenging within the current paradigm to to cover all the bases. So because of that, I had to shift. All right. I had to shift out of more of that traditional paradigm or um, my private practice and develop a practice that will allow me to in, um, be able to in, insert some of some of those areas, especially with genetic testing. And so with that, it's that understanding that women, um, they may go to still we can collaborate. That's the thing our, our medical system tends to want to, you know, segment everything. And I'm one of the women and uh, women physicians that I appreciate my traditional background. I still use my traditional yeah. background. I think it's important with everything, but mm -hmm. I don't want to segment, you know, I think it all needs to go together to making someone feel good and most importantly, get the outcomes that they want. And um, so with that, me shifting out of my private practice and um, really uh, putting a lot of my energy into my consulting programs has really benefited in the fact that I can be able to, you know, expand and shift the way that is necessary. And as I build, you know, it will be a more integrative space for women, but I, I think it's very important, you know, that that's communicated. Like it's very difficult to insert those things in a traditional model care where you are gonna have to seek phys physicians like you and other ones who are thinking a little bit more out the box uh, toward preventive and innovative medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is super important. Uh, there is there is something there is a question that has come up uh, multiple times in my practice and women come to me in different stages, of course, in their 20s, in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 50s, even in their 60s. And they ask, what are the hormones that should be tested at different stages, right, depending on how old uh, each person is? Mm -hmm. What do you think are the top three lab markers for um, women in each decade of their life? Okay. Um, I think it's good to also start with this. Um, I'm going to put like a little segue into the question too, mm -hmm. that trends. I'm big one on trends. It's one thing to look at the numbers and the where that decade is, 30s, 40s, 50s, but understand what that number implies to you and where it changes. And, and my mission is to kind of redefine that mindset or make sure you understand that shift because... That's the thing we get stuck, like you mentioned before, Dr. Lynn, we get stuck in, you know, um, either we'll write me a script and make it better. And we get stuck in normals, like, oh, okay, this is normal versus yeah. following the trend. So for my 30 year olds, I'm looking at, okay, are you trying to get pregnant or still want that window open or not? And if that's the case, I think above all, with all the decades, you want to make sure you're getting a complete blood count, you're getting um, a, a, a complete metabolic panel, uh, want to look at your liver function, mm -hmm. want to see where your um, your crit or your hemoglobin levels are, um, ferritin. And this is the time where you do want to do it. I prefer fasting because mm -hmm. one of the trigger marks of looking at some of the biomarkers, what we're starting to look at more with longevity has to do with um, fasting glucose, mm -hmm. fasting insulins, um, understanding the implications of those, even looking at your hemoglobin A1C, mm -hmm. and even Dr. Linda thyroid panels, mm -hmm. and um, taking it a step further, understanding like that TSH, like in our world of what a reference range of four mm -hmm. is normal, is just like, 
<laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> there are many practitioners out there, you know, that, hey, you're good, you're fine, see you next year. Um, and that makes a difference because as women get older and those shifts, you're looking at the trends. So if we look at the 30 year old and we're at least getting those baseline tests, the other ones I'll add into it where um, it's not only the thyroid panel, um, but the FSH, making sure you're timing it at the time, like day three usually is at the time of the menstrual cycle. And then also looking at the progesterone level, like around day 21, with, especially for moms or women who are interested in getting pregnant and understanding their progesterone levels. As I get a little old, as women get a little older, 40s, 50s, 60s, you, you do want to make sure you're getting these inflammatory markers in like your C-reactive protein or your homocysteine levels, um, uh, cholesterol, more elaborated panels, um, and then still the basic ones that you would get in your 30s as well. But that's to say, okay, we're still looking at the the still good mainstream laboratory tests, but then mm -hmm. you have like these functional tests, you know, mm -hmm. that give you some real time information. And so that's when you need to tap into your Dutch test, mm -hmm. um, like your thirties or forties, especially women who are already battling PCOS or mm -hmm. Um, more estrogen dominant um, problems. And the Dutch test um, gives you an opportunity to look at how your um, urine is pretty much outputting your metabolites from mm -hmm. how your hormones are breaking down. Um, and so adding those tests. And so the major hormone test that I would do like 40 and beyond still would be the FSH. I still try to look at some of the baselines when we look at estrogen, progesterone, but it, uh, but I still try to gear toward um, cycle dependent for those women who are still having a cycle. Mm -hmm. but really not to confuse things. It becomes really important not only with getting your testosterone, your DHEA, um, and um, having an idea where you land, but instituting some of these functional tests, especially if they plan on being on hormone replacement, because you can still test vitamin levels and vitamin mm -hmm and all of those which you know become important but i mean the main take home is trends i mean i'm a big one about when work kpis key performance indicators you need to have the kpis of your health and you need to be able to follow mm -hmm. those trends mm -hmm. do you test a lot you also check vitamin um d a lot and i'm i'm assuming also like i love the dutch test that's mm -hmm. one of my favorite mm -hmm. tests because that gives you so much more information that just mm -hmm you know, checking the sex hormones with blood, you know, with serum testing, but it really just shows how the pathway, what pathways are being metabolized, metabolized by, and it gives you just so much more information. So I'm glad that, you know, it's wonderful to hear when other doctors use that. Mm -hmm. is, is another test that, because I, I heard you listening, I was listening to you and, mm -hmm. um, GI gut health. Mm -hmm. You're a big believer and proponent with GI testing as mm -hmm. well. How often are you implementing that with the different age groups? Um, I I have it available, and it's mm -hmm. one of those where it is an additional test, and is one of those other tools I have in the box. But by the time I'm working with that subset uh, of women who are interested, most of the time I am interlinking with another functional doc or another physician mm -hmm. right there, um, because I don't. I, I recognize like the whole Lyme issue and some other things, mold and sensitivity testing. Mm -hmm. um, so I stay in my lane, but know where to collaborate. And I think that's important because a lot of times you might not have everything at your disposal or in your wheelhouse, but you know how to make sure you collaborate with other physicians to really maximize someone's health and especially when it comes to women. But mm -hmm. I love my medical school because we we, we always learn from the idea of a history, you know, mm -hmm. and no matter how many supplements or anything you can um, uh, throw at it. I never forget. We used to have these sessions during our medicine rotation with, I guess, what you would call the the house of our institution. And he we would literally present cases and he would not order a test. 
Mm. Okay. And he would get to the diagnosis and he would know exactly what to do with the patient. It's like, you feel like those old school things are just aren't there anymore. Not as much. Yeah. So a lot of times you can figure out just from the inflammatory pathways, what's going on with women from their history. You can find out just from uh, digestive health, you know, how often they're pooping and uh, what, you know, what it looks like, what their tongue looks like, you know, all of these things that go into digestive health. The testing at that point gives you a measure and a trend to follow and makes it a little bit more precise. But there are many things already when we're talking about gut dysbiosis or mm -hmm. issues where you have fluctuations. It's probably been there forever. I mean, if they've been on mm -hmm. guys for a long period of time, I mean, it's just so many things were already, you'll have some things in your tool house before to start before you even get a test, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've experienced that, Dr. Linda. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Larissa, I think it's a good moment to transition a little bit about menopause and what happens when women actually get into that stage in their life, actually even talking about perimenopausal states what kind of changes can they experience? What is important to know and how can they better maybe help themselves to transition into this uh, new stage in their life in a, in a better way, right? A lot of women have such a difficult time dealing with symptoms, emotional symptoms, physical symptoms, and just overall feeling so much so different. And in my, what I've seen in my practice many times, it, it can happen very, very fast, you know, from feeling normal mm -hmm. to all of a sudden feeling like everything's about to end for them, right? Like mm -hmm. everything's different, everything's changing. So how can they help themselves and what can we do also to help them? Okay, uh, excellent question. So I, I'm glad we get a chance to talk about it. So I'll take the first part of your question about, you know, just menopause itself. So. The definition is the absence of a menses for 12 consecutive months or for a year. But oftentimes women are experiencing symptoms of menopause way earlier than that. And what we are called, even though they're menstruating, uh, perimenopause mm -hmm. or that time or that period right before menopause hits. And there's a fluctuation of symptoms that can go from woman to woman, even before the total cessation of their menstrual cycles. But some of those symptoms can still persist. One of the big players are hot flushes, night sweats, the battle of the bulge, you know, just, hey, I just can't get rid of the weight or I just feel like it's surmounting um, energy levels, sleep disturbances are a big one, um, vaginal dryness or sexual dysfunction type changes and cognitive. I mean, that's, this is, cognitive mm. is huge. A lot of women are still in their peak careers when this hits and it's like a like, whoa, what, what just happened here? Yeah. <laughs> you know, this has been like a total interruption. Like what? And um, and so with that, it, it can catch us off guard and catch women off guard where you really don't know what to do. And so I always say you have two houses. And I know uh, there are many women that still have their mothers. So just deal with it. You know, you're going to be fine, just, I did it too, and you'll be fine. Hmm. But I veer on the side of get help. You know, there, <laughs> there are opportunities there where you can still be able to initiate immediate change so you can feel better. I mean, women are living longer. Mm -hmm. However, I always gear toward what is the quality that they're living? You know, mm -hmm. what is, how do we, how do you want to um, live the last, 50 plus years of your life, you know, and a lot of that has to do of getting help a little early on with those menopausal changes. And I'm a big one. It's like, it's sometimes it's not a one trick pony. It's not just one thing. So that's why I love the whole mind, body, spirit, hormones, because you women have dealt with so much stress by that point. And like your body tries to keep that homeostasis for so long mm -hmm. that it just totally tails on them. And they're getting like, you know, it seems like all these other factors, but it's been those subtle signs all along. We've just coped until like the body's like, nope, can't, you know, we need some help here. So that's the biggest thing, really understanding how, um, you know, what help looks like, how to individualize, how that systems approach and personalized approach helps women from nutrition, 
um, lifestyle changes, exercise, mindset, um, really improving that well-being and really understanding how those mechanisms in your body work. Mm -hmm. yeah, because estrogen does play such an important role. And as a woman goes through menopause, mm -hmm. we, we are making less estrogen. I think that's where the importance of knowing when to go and see a doctor, mm -hmm. because some systems are being downregulated. You're inflammatory. It's like you're more prone to inflammation. Yes. You and that's why women, right, are more prone to like heart attacks because of vascular health and the decline in estrogen. But you actually have a solution for that too. With and if you can talk a little bit about the importance of even and who's a candidate and who isn't for bioidentical hormones, because there's so much controversy with that. Mm -hmm. But I think there's just a lot, a lot of misinformation. Yes, absolutely. So um, just bioidentical hormone replacement is a very common um, type of replacement for doing just that, replacing hormone therapy. When um, women go through menopause, as you mentioned, Dr. Linda, there's a you know steep decline of estrogen, but many other hormones that play mm -hmm. a part. One big one um, that I talked today talked about earlier today is progesterone, and oftentimes mm -hmm. those issues of perimenopause have to do more of the steep decline of progesterone with the more potent fluctuations of estrogen, mm -hmm. and um, and then there's testosterone, your DHEA and understanding even the, some of those outside sex hormones like cortisol, mm -hmm. keeping that in check, you yeah. know, which is a big one when it comes to stress output. So bioidentical um, hormone therapy should be looked at as number one, it is a option and a solution that can work for many women, but it should not also be played just like with other synthetic hormones. When we used to, you know, traditional medicine, just, hey, we write a script and go on. And then the WHI study came out and everything just kind of went wonk and nobody wanted to prescribe hormones, thus the, the fear and the scare. Mm -hmm. um, but you can do it safely and you can also do it where you can get very good um, results and help a woman through perimenopause and menopause with hormone replacement, whether it's a mixture of the above, but it's so, so key important that you tackle or make sure you develop a relationship with a physician or a medical uh, care provider who is able to really look at your history, see if you're a good candidate. We don't want to make um, you know, a mistake of putting someone on just because you're menopausal, because I think it's definitely a safe way to do it. And one of the things I like is that no matter what you can look at, or at least what I like to look and understand, you know, what are the mental factors here? What are the uh, biological things? Is someone having an inflammatory, like their CRP is up the roof because you do want to address gut. You want to make sure that their liver can detox even bioidentical hormones, you know, mm -hmm. because they're still going to produce a metabolite, which are substances that break down in their system. And you want them to be able to get rid of the the, the bad stuff and keep the good stuff. It's like that balance of your reactive oxidative, you know, meaning that, you know, the breakdown of those bad things and those good mm -hmm. things, what the Dutch test tells you, which I like mm -hmm. when starting some type of hormone therapy where you can get that baseline and know how that person's body works and know what mm -hmm. kind of supplements will work for them and what, you know, how to titrate certain things because you're getting a functional result real time and you feel more comfortable as a practitioner giving it, you know, as mm -hmm. opposed to, you know, let's write a script and I'll see you in six months. Mm -hmm. What other things can women do aside from hormone replacement therapy if they're dealing with so many of the symptoms of menopause that you described, mm -hmm. um, if they want to help themselves? So a big one, big one. I, I believe sleep is queen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sleep is queen. And so when I work with women, um, it's called my Future Female Power Reset Program. Um, I like to set the foundation of those things that regardless if you're on hormone replacement or not, there are things that you can tool your body to make your body better for you to decrease inflammation and improve your immune system and make you feel good. I mean, what woman doesn't want to feel good and her best at this age, right? And 
um, when we talk about these things, you have to address sleep um, and those factors going into sleep. And so bringing up the question about HRT or hormone replacement again, if someone's on the fence about it and they know that their high flushes are keeping them up at night, I know that sleep is helping um, rebuild and repair and help hormone function. And if they're not getting to sleep, that is someone that I'm going to verge on the side if she's a good, safe candidate, that this is someone that may benefit from hormone replacement because mm -hmm. I know there's so many other factors there. But, um, you know, they're natural solutions with melatonin and everything. But I'm not going to pick up an Ambien. I'm not going to, you know, that is not what I'm going to write at that point. The other one is um, nutrition. Nutrition is very important. Um, when it comes to how our bodies work. And that's, I love the utility of using epigenetics because some of the factors that we get from that information, um, you can tell what support is really needed and what's lacking as opposed to um, the propensity of certain things that may not work as well for, mm -hmm. you know, for an individual. And uh, it helps you just, like I said, personalize it a little bit better. And then and um, the, the other thing is, you know, fitting in which supplements work the best and what would be the best to institute for someone. Like I said, foundationally, even before necessarily saying, OK, you're going to get a hormone or some type of advanced hormone replacement protocol. Mm. Now, I, have, I, I love that how you're you're incorporating all that because you actually have a program mm -hmm. that I think would tie into if you could create the future of medicine, you already have that answer. I know you do with the program that you're doing, you know, but I want people to, to hear that from you. You know, what would that look like? Because we definitely need a paradigm shift of sim, um, symptoms based to systems based, but actually having a relationship with your doctor and having a collaborative approach and, you have all of that. So can you kind of share about that? So the future of medicine is interesting. So I have to say that it's a quote somewhere that says it, it takes what thir three to four decades or something in order for a major paradigm shift to happen mm -hmm. in, in medicine, you know, like things that might be going on, but it takes like still several years. But when it comes to personalized medicine and some of the things that are going on now, I, I have hope that it's in the near future. Like meaning um, it, it's going, I'm going to really believe that it's really around the corner when we start instituting it more to our new doctors out there. Um, because I've been a medical school um, clerkship um, physician teacher and um, honestly, I, I felt like I was adding more, but also saying, but that's not going to be on your test, <laughs> Just, <laughs> you know, um, but, you know, opening the doors and making sure that we're also teaching our new physicians, our new clinical providers, our new nurse practitioners, the new paradigm shift as well, because you probably know yourself, Fernanda, um, you still probably you still had to seek that additional information. You know, you still had to go take courses, which I did. I had to go take courses. I had to go get this information, sit in these different seminars just to, you know, gather how this shift of modern medicine um, could make waves of change and really truly have preventive and innovative care. So my my view is is that one day, like the well woman visit, will not be a pap smear and a breast exam, right? <laughs> but that's yeah. the one that insurance covers, right? So my hope is that that well woman exam is a lot more curated to that person where it really truly lives up to his name of wellness exam, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I envision that, and I see it on the horizon because there are companies that are coming out. There's, I was recently, um, I'm in Florida and so hats off to Advent Health. Um, they, they did an open, um, like you could come in to be part of this study that they're putting together based on um, basically epigenetics or genetic profiles. And um, I thought it was good that, okay, if a big institution like that, it must be coming 
you know, it's just a matter of time of how it develops and move on. So um, it's coming, you know, and that's the look of modern medicine, hopefully curtailing it more individualized, not only for the woman, but also what we see differently in cultures. You know, I'm a I'm an African-American female. There are many things that uh, go along with my culture that it has different epigenetic marks that may not be seen mm -hmm. in other ethnic backgrounds. And mm -hmm. so really knowing how to curtail and treat those things are important. Mm -hmm. That's where the ancestral aspect is a key component as well when it comes to integrative uh, medicine and integrative nutrition. And that's why your, your plan is so customized or personalized or that it's precision medicine because it's precisely for that person's um, you know, ancestry, their genetic um, disposition and, and and all that. So that's beautiful how um, you're able to do that. Can you share something about, I heard about the four Ds, mm. the four Ds in your program. Um, it's interesting because I have, uh, the four Ds um, have actually transformed into like putting them in different places. So it's so exciting. So the four Ds um, originally was the four D model of uh, hormone optimization, like really instituting a, a well-versed woman, that power pose woman of understanding how the four Ds. And so it's distress, de, um, detox, declutter. And the big one is detour, like a detour of the mindset. So with my more transformative and what I've grown into is not only taking those four Ds, but sectioning them off of how I feel precision medicine within my program works. So one is, um, is it's more like a 3D in a way, but still instituting the 4D, um, where it's discovery. You know, a lot of times we're discovering exactly where, you know, where this woman is in her, in her life, wh what's more important, what's the goals, understanding the why behind all of this. And then um, two, that second phase has to do with defining, you know, really defining through um, epigenetics and other tools exactly how can that customized piece work. And then three, given the tools to really dominate, dominate mm -hmm. in, in those different areas and each of those segments or those phases still institute that distress, that detox, that declutter, and really that mindset piece. So together, it all marries to that mind, body, spirit, and hormones connection. I love that. I know. That's it's awesome. It's really important to always bring the patient back and connect them with their own mindset, right? Because mindset impacts directly how you feel. And how you feel, it's going to send the signals to your cells, to the DNA, and it's going to downregulate or upregulate the way that our our cells work down to you know every single cell down to our DNA. So it's so important to always, always, always in include thoughts and yeah. emotions in um, any type of treatment for any patient, right? They can be doing all of the treatments in the world, but if they are constantly thinking stressful thoughts, then that's the signal yeah. that they're constantly sending to their body. So mm -hmm. it's amazing that you're incorporating that. And I mean, I do see the change in medicine too. And as more and more science comes and there has been more studies that have been done about how thoughts impact uh, and our feelings impact our health. And I do see hopefully a, a transition in medicine happening in the near future. So yes, I mean, it's, it's super important. And I'm glad that we have someone like you who is teaching the newer generations already how all of these, you know, impacts someone's health. Absolutely. And it, I, I wanted to touch on something that I thought was very interesting. Um, is uh, you've heard of the ACEs, like the mm -hmm. uh, adverse child e events, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and it's become so such uh, talked about, especially in the world of COVID and, you know, mm -hmm. trying to establish good environment for our children and going back to school, not to go back to school and the impact just developmentally. And it's so interesting that I'm, those conversations need to continue to translate for us as adults yes. because yes. technically these are adverse events that are impacting us. And I mean, they're like mini traumas, they're microaggressions, they're like, and they all 
cumulatively do things. So just like we have put a lot of detail with our children and making sure that they have the developmental environments and everything to, to uh, continue to nourish and, and help them along. We kind of need that for, I mean, not kind of, we need that for ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. because these are all things that are playing into our hormone function and optimization is it's, is playing into the oxidative stress on our bodies and being able to get rid of that. So I am very interested to see a lot of the studies that come out over the next year or two about chronic disease and um, um, uh, vascular events and these things that have impacted, I know mainly have increased because of the stress, mm -hmm. because of the mm -hmm. trauma, financial you know, disruption of the climate that we live in right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%, because right now, we can even look at this, I mean, something good came out of COVID, that's how Fernanda and I connected, and we started this podcast, so we can look at it as, is this happening to me or for me, you know, mm -hmm. it's all perspective, and we can, when nothing has value or meaning to it, until we give that a meaning, and a lot of times that meaning is based on what we hear from other people. And we've always talked about, you know, we got to release those limiting beliefs. You can be limitless. And being a person of faith, it's just like, you know, we weren't, we were given the spirit of um, not of fear, but of strength and power. Mm -hmm. We have all that, but stop, wa stop watching CNN, the constant negative <laughs> news, and put your mind in and read something that's going to empower you connect with other people. That's why we love doing this every Wednesday, because it's just so exciting to just connect with other, you know, especially women, I love connecting with other women, because when we set our mind on something, it's like, all right, girl, we're gonna do it no matter what we got this, you know, <laughs> we're there as a, our own tribe. And, and I love that you're creating your tribe with your program. So please share that with the listeners because you've got a lot of plans going on. You mm -hmm. left your private practice to do this to really help and impact women mm -hmm. with the program. I know you've got a book coming up. I know you've got a lot of exciting stuff. So please, please, yes. please share that with us. Um, yes, of course. And I really do appreciate um, the scripture you put in there because a lot of what we do um, or plan to do is a leap of faith. It's a leap of faith. And, and, and you're right. It's not given in, in veins of fear, even though it can creep up there, but it, it was something where, okay, I need to stand in my truth, stand in my power and really make a significant change. So thank you for that because it, it just, you know, still that alignment. Um, so yes, through, through my program now, it's the Future Female Power Reset Program. This is the opportunity to help women achieve hormone optimization and improve hormone balance so they can lead more um, powerful lives. And through that, we, we show up more productive, more performance driven. It should not be a disruption. You know, I, I feel like it shouldn't feel like a disruption. With that, this program is also for that woman who, um, uh, I have a special love for those women who are 35 and up who still either have not had a baby or who is interested in getting pregnant. There are many factors around that age group that are not discussed to the extent or the value of improving your preconception health, your womb wellness at that point. So this is geared to you as well. Um, <clears throat> so if, um, and then I don't know how to insert, um, a discovery call or anything, but you can go to my website, um, Dr. Larissa, D-R-L-A-R-E-E-S-A.com and, um, definitely be able to plug in and get information there. Um, Dr. Linda had mentioned a book that I'm excited about is currently on pre-sale, um, it's called The Codes of Longevity, and I'm a contributing author. So I am interested to hear about uh, your book, <laughs> Fernanda, that you have kind of, because you're right, it's a process. And um, The Codes of Longevity is um, just uh, an opportunity that has 
definitely allowed me to collaborate with other like-minded alignment individuals and understanding how age is not a disease. It is a process mm -hmm. that we can start reversing for ourselves and really countering on that mind, body, spirit aptitude, but looking at it from a different paradigm of information that is still at our fingertips, things that we can do in our lifestyle right now that can make an impact so we can build better and beautiful lives, where it really translates to generational health, you know, mm. because there's a link between what happens in the womb and transgenerational what happens later. So we have, that's a serious paradigm that has to shift, you know, preconception needs to be thought of in a different way. Um, as we go into these biological clock changes needs to be thought in a different way. So um, very excited about that. And you can find that at codesoflongevity.com. Um, and there's on that website, there's a link to get the book. It's on pre-sale now, 99 cent on Amazon. And December 6th, it officially launches. So um, it's out there. <laughs> That's wonderful, wonderful. And Dr. Larissa, as we get to the end of our show today, we like to end with a gratitude. So what are you grateful for today? I am grateful for this conversation. I really am grateful um, mm -hmm. because the more I have taken that leap of faith, um, there's a thing about the universe opens up to those people and those connections and relationships yeah. where all of a sudden those people you don't see, like who else thinks like me? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, they do. And you, you find it. So I'm grateful for that um, because you need that village. You need that support. You need to feel like you have that tribe out there who's right along with you in the trenches doing that grassroots type movement. So I am grateful. Awesome. I'm very grateful for me, you. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Linda. Anything else? No, that was that was amazing. I'm gonna have to go back and take notes. Such mm -hmm. a um, just full of lots of gems here. Thank you so much for just the opportunity to you know be present with you, and um, just so excited for what the future holds for you and how you're going to continue to impact, you know, not hundreds, but thousands, I assume even millions of women with what you're doing and you're doing it because it's a calling for you and it was put upon your heart and you're all about service. So um, there's some good things coming in your future. I know that. So thank you so much for being thank with you. us. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for the audience. We will see you. Oh, we have a, a special episode coming up this Friday. Today was all about, about women. And Friday, we are going to be talking about men health. So please connect with us on Friday at a regular time, 1 p.m. Mountain St Standard Time. And we have a wonderful doctor coming up, joining us and talking about everything men related. Yes. So super excited right. about that. Yes. And we will connect them with everybody on Friday. Thank you again. Right. See y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.